So year 13, welcome to unit six. Um, we'll talk first of all about the unit as a whole, but before we get to that, I wanna talk about um, how you might going about, how you might go about making a project or creating a project. Let's think for a moment about, I don't know, Microsoft and the fact that every year they release a new version of their software or about FIFA who every year release a new version. There'll be some changes, but largely it stays the same. Sometimes they change a major component, sometimes they don't. But they know that every year they're gonna to have to make a new version of that software. So there are various different ways that you can go about making software or solving a problem. Product development methodologies, the way in which you're actually gonna go about planning, researching, and then making it happen and delivering it. So we'll look first of all at P1. And in P1, you've got to describe one method. You say what method you're gonna do, whether it's agile, whether it's scrum, whether it's spiral, and we'll get to all that later on, whether it's waterfall, which we're gonna look at first of all, because it's a fairly simple one to understand. That's the first important thing to recognize is that there are different ways of solving a problem, of bringing a product to market, which ultimately is what you're doing as part of this uh, as part of this unit. So, uh, as you can see in front of you, this is from the uh, from the specification, and I really, really, really cannot recommend strongly enough that you actually get your heads into this. There's only three or four pages that you really need look at, but look at what I'm supposed to be teaching you. Look at what you need to understand and look at the output, the, the, the projects, the different P1, P2, P3 that you have to actually produce at the end of it, okay? So, I'm gonna look at 1.1 there, and while this is all about understanding how a product is brought to market, or how, in this case, how an application is developed, and for the sake of argument, let's talk about this as being uh, going from using paper to using uh, an app. And the example that you're gonna be doing is a driving school. So currently, you rock up for your driving lesson, and at the end of it, you will make a new appointment with your driving instructor. You'll get out your paper diary, and he'll say, how about Wednesday, three o'clock? And you'll go, no, I've got a lesson then. I could do Wednesday, 4.30. He looks at his diary, and he goes, okay, and he pencils you in, and that's how it works. That's how it worked when I took my test thousands of years ago, when I did my lessons. So what you're gonna do is create an app whereby you can do the whole thing using your app. You don't need to talk to anyone. It can, you input what lesson you want, it will check it against his diary, and if there's a free slot, you can book it, and if there isn't, you can't, and then you'll get some kind of notification. So that's a really simple way of looking at what we're gonna achieve here. So, if you look at the screen now and think about any application that you're gonna to bring to market, a product that you're going to make, all of these models, all of these different ways of doing it, are gonna have the same sorts of phases. When we talk about phase, we mean where a certain type of activity is happening. And let's try and look through these so you understand what they mean. And having done your work with Unit 17, this shouldn't come as a complete surprise to you. So first of all, you've got requirements analysis. And that's where you're gonna be looking at what it is that you need to do, what's the problem that you're solving. So in this case, the requirement analysis will involve looking at, the, uh, at, at what's currently going on. In other words, he's just got a paper-based system. He would make phone calls to, to, uh, to cancel uh, any appointments that he couldn't do, um, and he would write them down, okay? Then we look at the design. What's the design actually going to look like? So you're gonna plan how the thing is gonna look, how it's gonna work, and so on and so forth, looking at costings, all the rest of it. And then you've got the implementation. The, this is the, the making it paragraph. So this is where you're gonna actually code, you're gonna make your application, you're going to create it. After that, you're gonna test it to make sure that it does what it says on the tin. And then you're going to deploy it. You're going to put it out there in the marketplace so that the thing is actually used and that you can get some money for it. And then you've got maintenance. So think about every time that you've uh, downloaded a new, a new version, uh, a new software version, a new upgrade for whether it's uh, iOS, whether it's Android, whether it's Mac, whether it's Windows, pretty much straight away within a week or two, you get a new patch because there'll be a few things that weren't quite right about the, uh, about the original design. 
So this maintenance thing is about making sure the thing keeps working, solving bugs and improving it based on user feedback. And that feedback loop is something we'll need to consider again in this, all right? So unit one, all we need to do is understand one model. And you can see there's a list of models there, a, li a list of ways in which you could bring a product to market. And all of these all of these different models, whether it's waterfall, iterative, agile, rapid, spiral, prototype, we'll look at all of these, but for the sake of unit one, you need to understand one of them and describe one of them. And I suggest that you choose waterfall or choose the one that you want to use when you create your app in unit six. So you might go for a spiral model, you might go for the iterative model. And when we get to M1, that's when you're going to have to describe more than one model. But for the sake of P1, all we're going to do is jump in and have a look at waterfall, and then you're going to need to describe it. So basically regurgitating in your own words, showing understanding of the model that's explained to you. So in this next video, we'll have a look at that model. Mm -hmm.